Good morning and welcome to the March installment of Breakaway Funding's webinar series. Hard to believe that the first quarter of 2016 is already come and gone. This month we bring you personal and commercial credit, the five C's of credit ability. We are delighted you have joined us. This is Kim Castleonis, the founder and managing partner of Breakaway Funding and your host this morning. As many of you know, Breakaway Funding was created as a direct result of a two-pronged problem I encountered as the CEO of Circle Bank and a problem that continues to exist today. Those problems, lack of access to capital to fund innovation and job creation, and second, community banks struggle to lend. The solution? Let's leverage technology via a fully integrated crowdfunding platform to match individual investors and businesses requiring capital to strengthen their balance sheets and position those companies for further funding by traditional lending institutions. We call this collaborative solution the Community Capital Marketplace, and it is the engagement all members of our local economies, investors, business owners, entrepreneurs, financial institutions working in partnership to ensure capital is made available to propel innovation, job creation, and provide opportunities for all investors, accredited and non-accredited. We are here to help companies prepare for market and execute their capital raise and help them manage their crowd thereafter. Our system is transparent and includes financial analysis tools to help investors and make informed decisions. Finally, the marketplace is designed to provide community banks and commercial credit unions a steady stream of new client relationships, and perhaps one of those new relationships is you. To help everyone prepare for and participate in this exciting new marketplace, we provide a full complement of services, including monthly educational webinars. In that regard, we are pleased to have with us an expert in all things personal and business credit, and he has some very interesting facts about how lenders look at credit, credit scores, and what goes into those calculations, as well as what each of the five elements of your credit ability is. We will hear from him in just a moment. To help set your expectation this morning, here is our agenda. I will begin with a few opening remarks followed by our presenter. We'll spend a little time to answer questions. To ask a question, please use the comment box at the lower right-hand side of your screen. If we are unable to get to your question this morning, please feel free to reach out to our presenter post-event. We'll close with some wrap-up thoughts and provide you a preview of our next two webinar topics. Let's begin. As a reformed banker, I have spent 20 years granting credit based in large part on the personal and business credit of the bank's clients. And as some of you may be aware, hiccups in your personal credit can haunt you what for what seems like a lifetime and prevent you temporarily from gaining access to the credit you need to execute your plans. Do not despair. There's hope. And today that hope comes in the form of information. For the more you know, the better decisions you will be able to make to ensure you have access to where, when, and how much credit you need to achieve whatever you want to achieve, whether that's buying a dream home or investment real estate properties. For good credit may not only mean the amount that you qualify for, but also the rate, right? The lower the credit, the higher the rate. You can get better insurance rates. Insurance companies consider your credit rating in determining your premiums. And of course, for those of you who are seeking a higher education, student loans are always a good way to help finance that. And for those of you in business, we're always seeking working capital, equipment, lines of credit. And believe me when I tell you, community lenders want to lend. That is their primary means of revenue, unlike their larger brethren, whose revenue is generated through assessing fees. So help them lend to you then everyone wins. Life is fluid and, well, sometimes life just happens. But don't let a few crummy experiences define your future. Get informed, get help, and get on with your life. Our presenter today is an expert in all things credit. His firm, Apollo Credit and Finance Solution, achieves results by providing education, consulting, and support that ensure a focused direction for positive personal and business development. They create the foundation necessary for their clients to attain the best credit profile possible and obtain the necessary financing that will allow them to build the life and realize the dreams they desire.
Having launched his first company over 24 years ago, he has gained a thorough understanding of how credit works and what people and businesses can do to improve their credit. Since 2008, he has focused exclusively on helping consumers and business owners to secure the credit that they need. Good morning, Eric. We are so delighted to have you this morning. Oh, thanks so much, Kim. I appreciate the opportunity to share uh, my and my team's passion. Uh, your slides leading up, the uh, I'm looking for an exorcist or a ghostbuster. Maybe those should be a couple of our new keywords uh, in terms of search capability for Google. Um, thank you very much. You've, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Good morning. Um, you've got a little bit of uh, my background. What I want to share with you ever so briefly is uh, why I'm so passionate about this and my why behind um, why I do what I do and why I started the business, uh, Apollo Credit and Finance Solutions. It really goes back to uh, a life-changing experience that I had in 1997 when I almost lost my wife, my one-year, one-month-old daughter, and my unborn son to a house fire. And wholly traumatic from the standpoint of losing all of my material things, but the prospect of rebuilding my life was to a degree insurmountable. And through the efforts of local organizations and individuals, uh, I, we were able to rebuild our lives. And I, I never truly knew that these resources were available. And, and one resource in particular, uh, the Red Cross, uh, provided complete support for all that we needed to rebuild. And it was really at that point that service to others became a, such a significant component of me as a person, me as a business person. So with respect to uh, comprehensive support uh, to the depth that people can either move through or build their lives the way that they want, that ultimately is what Apollo is all about. So before we get started, I wanna talk a little bit about um, money and uh, credit being emotional topics. And I'll, I'll use a, a story um, briefly. A, a few years ago, a gentleman was referred to me, um, brief profile of, of him, a very successful business person, you know, four to five million dollars a year, real estate investor, but he had hit uh, a wall whereby he could not leverage his credit to access the financing to continue building his empire, if you will. And he was upset to say the least uh, through careful consideration of his entire profile his creditability in its entirety paying a lot of attention to his consumer credit or personal credit um, we were able to move through the process and get him back to the point where he was able to leverage uh, himself uh, in more appropriate manners to to get the financing that he needed but point is it's emotional money credit, it, it can stir an awful lot in us. And almost invariably, uh, mistakes mistakes happen. Kim, I, I think you mentioned a little bit earlier, stuff happens in our lives. And honestly, stuff always doesn't have to happen. Things can happen to our credit that we might not be aware of. Um, and to that end, I, I'd like to suggest that credit scores are, they're really imperfect indicators of our credit worthiness for a variety of reasons, but most important of which are uh, the information just not might, might not be available and the information may be erroneous. So just keep that in mind as we, as we go forward. Um, consumer credit scores, whether you're just a consumer or a business owner, it really is the cornerstone to um, lending decisions and evaluation for a vast number of other uh, decisions. Kim mentioned a few insurance, things of that nature. Uh, last but not least, and, and this is hopefully uh, what I'm here for today, is to impart uh, some information, some knowledge that will empower you, the listener, uh, to, um, to make credit work for you and not necessarily against you. It really, when it comes to credit, it's about knowing how to play the game. Does that make sense? All right, so our objectives today uh, we're going to learn about what the five C's are and how creditors, uh, vendors uh, use the five C's to evaluate both personal and business credit. Uh, we're also going to talk about how to improve uh, the five C's. And then at the end of our time together, we're going to do some question and answer, excuse me, for both uh, personal and uh, business credit concerns. 
So I, I've been using this, this word, uh, credit ability. I would love to say that I coined the phrase. I did not. Um, but what is credibility to Apollo? Uh, it is the ability of a consumer or uh, a business owner to secure credit and financing uh, that they need in the best possible terms. That's ultimately why we're there. Um, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a point all the way along to come back to consumer credit or a business owner's credit. Business creditability, for example, can be highly dependent on uh, the business owner's credit, especially if it's a new business or there's not an extensive uh, record of credit, uh, reported credit that is specific to the business. And when I'm talking about business owners, typically we're talking about individuals who own more than a 20% stake in a business. So the, the five C's, the first of the five C's, and I, I think, uh, Kim will agree with this, if I may be so bold. Uh, the first of the five C's most important is character. And character is a subjective assessment to the likelihood that a person or a business will pay their debts in full or on time. I just read that slide. Uh, basically, what it boils down to is whether or not they're, get, they're gonna repay the money based on history. So how, how do lenders and creditors, vendors assess character? Uh, they, they look at past performance. They, they look at data for a consumer or a business uh, they, they want to see extensive record of bills being paid on time, for example. And if there's extensive history, the likelihood of them doing this in the future is good. Conversely, if they've got uh, records of uh, late payments, defaults, things of that nature, again, uh, chances are going into the future that, uh, that that activity will continue to take place. Unfortunately, what happens is if a business or a consumer uh, doesn't have much credit history or well-developed credit profiles or credit histories, they might be turned down simply because there's not enough information for institution, private party to assess their character. And again, most important, that's typically what, uh, what is looked at first. And the two most common tools for assessing character are credit reports and credit scores. Now, consumer credit scores, um, it is, it's a numerical representation of us, and it, uh, it stinks to be boiled down to a number, doesn't it? There, there are a lot of different uh, consumer scores out there, most of them uh, based on the FICO scoring system. FICO is the, the one that's known to just about everybody out there. Um, the other uh, scoring models uh, have at this point mimicked the uh, scoring range of FICO, which is 300 to 850. And uh, from, a, from a scoring standpoint, the good news is uh, in, um, in the last year, we've actually achieved as a consumer, as a society, uh, rather, uh, the highest national average uh, in, the, in the recorded past, which is uh, incredible. Um, Going back to the different types of uh, credit scores and credit scoring models, I, I, I want to impress upon everybody on the call that uh, FICO, it's a lot like Kleenex um, insofar as uh, nose tissue paper, uh, everybody calls it uh, uh, Kleenex. FICO is not the only model out there and because of that and because of the type of uh, or the reason for the credit pull, the scores might be vastly different based on the model and based on the type of uh, lending, for example, or lack thereof, that is being sought. So just because you're monitoring your credit and you see a particular credit score doesn't mean it's gonna be the same with a lending institution as the takeaway on that one. So getting into um, uh, the score breakdown, I'm gonna use actually the FICO model now, the, the FICO algorithm, the math that's, uh, that's used to actually calculate the score, it's a closely guarded secret. It's kind of like Coca-Cola's formula for their, uh, their drink. But uh, FICO puts out their, their model, and we'll talk about it briefly here. This is something that I could spend a lot of time on and go very deep on. But in brief, uh, the first and largest contributing factor to our consumer credit scores is our payment history. All of the data that is reported to the three credit bureaus, Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax, and I, I emphasize does get or is reported to the bureaus because not everything is. Not all data, not all consumer vendor relationships, all that information is reported to them. So that which is there, the most important factor in all of that data is the recency of the activity. 
whether it be positive or negative. For example, uh, I've seen credit scores uh, north of 800 uh, fall by 100 points when an alleged late payment comes in, in the recent past. So the recency of the information is uh, the most significant contributing factor to that uh, largest swath of the um, consumer credit score. The next is 30% and it is our debt ratio. And the, the largest contributing factor to this 30% slice of the pie is uh, revolving credit or credit cards. For example, uh, you have a $10,000 credit card, you're using $7,000 of it, your ratio on that credit card is 70%. Uh, the higher the ratio, the fewer points are allotted in that component of the score. Ultimately, the goal here is to have to optimize a score to have that that ratio 29% or less. Uh, the age of our credit is uh, the next contributing factor. It's 15% of our credit. And these last three pieces, uh, by the way, are the ones that many don't either know or understand deeply and can significantly, when you add them all up, you've got 35%, they can significantly impact a, a credit score. 15% is the age. And the age is a lot like what it sounds like. It's the the history, how long one has had credit, either opened or closed. Um, the next contributing factor is the credit mix, and this speaks to the various relationships that a consumer has with, um, with various either establishments or types of loans. For example, a good consumer mix could be something like one or two mortgages, a student loan, a, a personal line of credit, a car loan and three or four credit cards. So that's a good broad base of uh, credibility because of, because of the number and the different types of relationships that the consumer has. The narrower or the fewer number of relationships one has, uh, the less credible one is, the fewer points are allotted. And then last but not least, we have inquiries. And for a lot of the public, inquiries are uh, scary. Uh, you know, don't run my credit, don't run my credit, it's going to affect it. Uh, well, it certainly can, but not all inquiries are built the same. Uh, on the non-impactful side, you have the credit monitoring that consumers have available to us, and um, those are considered soft pulls. Uh, I'll highlight at this point, almost invariably, the score that you get out of those pulls will be different from a financial risk assessment on a hard pull, which can affect your credit score. Now, not all credit pulls are the same. For example, uh, we as consumers about 10 years ago were provided the opportunity to price shop for all intent and purposes. We are able to go out and seek credit from, for example, uh, uh, mortgage um, uh, financial institutions. Within a 30-day period, we can go out and price shop and have our credit pulled 25, 30, 40 times in that 30 day window and it's only gonna count as one. So in terms, of, um, in terms of consumer credit scores, those that is a 50,000 level view of, um, of what FICO wants the, the consuming public to know. It's far more in depth. Um, and luckily I've had some training with uh, actually one gentleman who helped rewrite FICO 7. Um, so just know that Consumer credit scores are more than what I just illustrated, far deeper understanding, and a lot of it depends on the overall profile, not just the uh, simple nuts and bolts of, of these five pieces. Next, I'm gonna talk about business credit scores, and there are, there are a number of business credit scoring entities, and uh, the most prevalent of which is uh, Dun & Bradstreet. Uh, Dun & Bradstreet is the 800-pound gorilla uh, global um, enterprise that um, many businesses turn to for the evaluation scoring uh, of business activity. <clears throat> and this could be used for lending relationships, uh, vendor relationships, and many others. The PADEX score in particular is the most prevalent, the most widely known, um, simply because it does what most um, financial institutions in particular and, and vendors, potential vendors, it indicates what they want to know, which is whether or not a company, a business is going to pay them back and when. Uh, the, the scale is from zero to 100, uh, which makes it easy. Um, 
the, uh, the score range 80 and above is uh, an indicator that a business, is, a business is making their payments on time or early. And I'm stressing early in this case because this is unlike consumer credit. This is an opportunity for businesses, if they do pay early, to actually be uh, more rewarded or uh, rewarded for and with a higher score because of that uh, activity. Uh, when, it, when it comes to lending, plus or minus 75 on the, on the paydex scale is typically what institutions are looking for. And this, this last piece uh, with respect to the reliance on vendors or creditors for that matter to report the data, I really wanna stress business credit profiles are different from consumer credit profiles. On the consumer side, you can pretty much breathe and after the age of 18, you're gonna have a file with the three major credit bureaus. On the business side, it takes a concerted effort to create and populate profiles with very important information about the business, uh, who the owners are, address, uh, the, the appropriate SIC code, uh, which is a significant contributing factor to uh, some of the scoring models out there. But point being, business owners have to pay attention to it, not just populate it, but, but monitor it and monitor both really, uh, business credit as well as consumer credit. When it, uh, the SBSS score, the, uh, the Small Business Scoring Service, many, many business owners don't know about this. It was uh, something that um, the SBA specifically um, uh, is started using, uh, actually requiring for their SBA 7A loans under $350,000, except for a, a couple of very specific types of loans. And the SBSS score is um, rather unique and a really uh, inventive way of combining a couple of business credit scores and a couple of consumer credit scores into one score with a scale of zero to 300 to give an appropriate indication of how a business slash business owner or owners uh, stack up in terms of risk. Uh, when it comes to that 7A loan, um, uh, qualifier plus or minus is uh, 160,000. And the, the 7A loan is a, a virtual catch-all uh, with respect to uh, a lot of business owners out there in, in terms of uh, seeking money. So credit reports, and. In, in the takeaway on this um, this piece, uh, they usually include more than one score, uh, although it can be whittled down to one. Uh, it provides more than just a score. There's more information that's being reviewed that is subjective a lot of times. And um, when it when it comes to the regulation of the um, the credit scoring entities. The consumer side we have uh, from the FTC down, but uh, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, for example, the Fair Credit Reporting Act, the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, and a lot of support for consumers that uh, provide a very clear course of action for uh, remedying erroneous information, for example. It is not the same on the business side. Uh, it's, it's a little bit of the wild, wild west in terms of uh, not only making sure that the profiles are built properly, but also when it comes to errors, uh, it, it can be a, a little more challenging because there's not as much support out there. So let's move along to uh, capacity, the second uh, most important C in the five Cs. And so character provides uh, the opportunity to subjectively assess uh, whether or not, um, let's say, an institution wants to lend money. <clears throat> capacity is whether or not that business or consumer has the ability to, to uh, take on new, new debt. And ultimately what this boils down to is whether or not the business or the person has enough money coming in and can prove it. And this is imp important and can prove that they have enough money coming in to pay not only their existing bills, but taking on new debt because no institution, no private person wants to give money to an entity or a person that, is struggling to pay their bills. Got to be able to prove it too. So how do we assess uh, capacity for a consumer? Uh, the simple rundown is uh, employment and salary history. So checking um, 
uh, checking salary history, histories, checking uh, pay stubs, uh, making sure employment uh, verification, uh, things of that nature. So basically looking at the history and the likelihood of that history to continue. The evaluation of the ones and zeros or what's in black and white from a checking and savings account standpoint, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, as well as uh, current credit utilization. Yes, this plays into um, the subjective side of uh, character or credit scoring, but it's also taken into consideration, again, from a, a sheer one and zero at the time that lending is taking place standpoint. And then just behind that, it is um, debt to income ratio. And uh, as a quick uh, delineator, these two sound alike, debt ratio and debt to income ratio. Debt to income ratio, just by virtue of definition, uh, includes uh, income. I, I want to make the point here that income does not play into the calculation of uh, credit scores. So assessing capacity for a consumer, um, making sure that they can pay their bills. Assessing capacity for a business is very similar. And uh, when, when it comes to, if you will, the rubber hitting the road, uh, if they have good credit scores as a, a business owner, excellent. That's a great first step. If they have no credit scores as a, as a business, that's a detractor and a significant one at times. Um, that can be overcome to a degree uh, if a business has a significant capacity and can prove it. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand on and can prove it because a business that does you know, uh, half a million dollars, but shows a profit of $20,000. I know the numbers are way off here. Uh, that is not a good bet for a business, uh, excuse me, for a financial institution to lend money to. So between making sure that there is money in the bank and institutions, uh, even private lenders are going to review bank statements to, uh, to verify end of the month balance, average monthly balance, <clears throat> um, which are the, the, the key indicators, again, to uh, ensuring that they can pay back any new debt. Uh, they're also going to look at uh, tax returns. Uh, for a business, they're going to look at tax returns for the business owner or owners, uh, as well as the business itself. And depending on the structure, that could mean a number of different things. But the, the, the takeaway, the driving uh, force here is um, what's in black and white, what can be proven, what shows that a business has the capacity to repay a loan. And then uh, finally, uh, financial statement and information, including uh, balance sheets, um, income statements, or, or a P&L, excuse me, uh, and cash flow statements. These are all uh, the, the black and white uh, information that is used by, again, either financial institutions or uh, private parties really to evaluate risk and, and uh, ensure that they're, they're going to get their money paid back to them. The next of the five C's is uh, capital. And it's, um, it basically means uh, it's the means through which a consumer or a business owner can repay a debt uh, that is, uh, in my words, uh, a little less liquid than the capacity that we just talked about, the, the dollars and cents that we just talked about. So when it, when it comes to, uh, to capital uh, for, a, for a business, for example, uh, an institution uh, that is assessing it for um, assessing the business owner and uh, the entity for, um, for lending, they're going to look at how much skin does the business owner have in the game? How much of, of his or her or their own investment is poured back into, uh, into the business? Uh, they, they could also look at retained earnings um, or other owner assets as a means to uh, potentially repay the debt and uh, satisfy their, um, their desire to have that made whole. Um, when it comes to collateral, uh, collateral for m much of the Consumer lending that goes on is, uh, well, a lot of times it's what the money is going to be used for. Uh, for example, you go buy a car, the car is used as collateral against the loan of, uh, that you, you take out to, to purchase that vehicle. 
uh, homes are another perfect example. The home turns out to be the collateral uh, for the money that is uh, used to buy it. Uh, for for businesses, uh, these uh, these different types of collateral can can range from certainly real estate uh, on the commercial side, um, commercial real estate, or or even the uh, the owner's uh, personal real estate. Um, but it can also include equipment, uh, inventory. Um, accounts receivable. Uh, but basically, this is the opportunity for the bank. And mind you, they don't want to sell anything to get their money back. But to make them feel better, to mitigate the risk, they will use various types of um, means to collateralize the money that they're going to lend. So we've gone through four of the C's at this point. And what I'd like to briefly suggest uh, is Credit is not just about numbers, and when it comes to getting money, it just isn't about a credit score or the numbers. It's all of these factors that get taken into consideration. And when whether it be a person or a business is uh, evaluating his or her ability to access financing, specifically for this uh, this this um, um, webinar, all of these components need to be looked at. Some deeper than others, but. Uh, all components, all of the five C's. Conditions, last but not least, are um, literally the conditions under which a loan is being made. And uh, economic factors, both from a, a, a macro level, what's going on in the world today, uh, and on down, to, on down to a micro level. And um, also what, what the money is going to be used for. Uh, a lot of what plays into um, um, conditions specifically with respect to businesses is uh, what industry they're in. Uh, high risk industries um, are, well, they're high risk. <laughs> and it, it plays into uh, the scoring model of the business, excuse me, the business credit scoring um, uh, agencies as well. So uh, conditions are influers, influencing uh, or influencers from a global perspective on down to a local perspective. Um, and from a, a global and local perspective, we, we need not look any further than uh, 2007, 2008, when uh, lending pretty much came to a screeching halt. So steps for improving creditability. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to illustrate what the, what the highlights are for me. And uh, hopefully, there will be some questions in the end, and uh, we can get a little bit deeper on these. Again, this is a high-level overview of a very deep topic. Paying bills on time. Uh, and I'll just leave it as uh, uh, paying bills early is the best case scenario. Um, just get it done and over with. Monitoring credit reports, consumer or business. From a statistical standpoint, um, and I'll share this uh, uh, in a moment, it's scary how much can be wrong with reported data or lack thereof. Making sure that our utilization is, uh, is, um, is in check. And then last but not least, making sure that uh, our, our debt to income or our incoming is uh, more than our outgoing. So when it, when it comes to keeping up with payments, very simple, don't make late ones. Uh, and not only don't make late ones, but don't make partial payments. Uh, making a partial payment doesn't do anything for the uh, credit reporting aspect of that activity uh, on a credit report. When it comes to credit monitoring, here again, from a statistical standpoint, uh, and this is third party, this is not uh, Eric or Apollo um, uh, crunching numbers. Uh, the bureaus did their research, the public interest research group did their research. Anywhere between 15 and 79% of all credit reports, consumer, have errors. 15 to 79% have errors. Not all of them affect scores. There's no no specific number on what affects scores, but that in its own right should prompt you to make sure that you're monitoring your credit for identity theft, for accuracy of information, for the erroneous information that happens to creep onto it. And there are a lot of different reasons why. Um, monitoring uh, Dun & Bradstreet, Experian, and Equifax uh, is important as well from a statistical standpoint, again, third party, I have seen anywhere between 23 and 28 percent of all business credit reports have errors on them. And much of this information is just, it's permeated or allowed to, to remain because the business owners just aren't paying attention to it. Um, one of the easiest ways to uh, keep tabs on 
both uh, uh, business credit reporting and consumer credit reporting, as well as actually the only place that you can uh, maintain an eye on this, the SBSS score, is through a resource online called, and that's uh, NovemberAlphaVictor.com, NAV.com. Now, the, the challenge with that resource is it takes care of two-thirds of the information. It, uh, it provides information on two of the consumer credit bureaus and two of the business credit bureaus, uh, and then the SBSS. I, I, I wholeheartedly encourage you to look at the whole picture, because if you've got a third missing on each side, uh, that is, um, frankly, a recipe for, uh, for disaster. When monitoring credit reports, uh, there are there are procedures that are put in place. Uh, there are a lot of uh, nonprofit agencies, especially on the uh, on the consumer side, that that uh, can assist with how to uh, fix consumer credit. Apollo, uh, definitely, that is uh, one of our areas of expertise. Not just consumer, but business and all things credit. Uh, but follow the procedures to make sure that um, information is updated, accurate, and um, as clean as it possibly can be. Utilization. I mentioned earlier, 29% or less uh, on the on the limits, and this this is across the board for um, both uh, uh, consumer cards and business cards. Um, in short, keep the limits low. Uh, it's just risky behavior to have those uh, those limits higher than uh, than that 29% ratio. Um, an easy fix to that, and, and a lot of people miss this. Um, ask for limit increases. It's a very easy opportunity to positively affect, if there are balances uh, on those cards, to positively affect uh, that 30%, and it's equivalent on the business side, but for the consumer, 30% of the overall score. So uh, incremental requests for increases uh, is wholly prudent. Um, for consumers, and this really depends on the rest of the profile, but three cards plus or minus is, uh, is a good target. And I, I can't stress enough, um, it depends on the rest of the profile. Uh, the, the, the description, the, uh, the, the credit pie that I gave you a little bit earlier, that is 50,000 foot level. A lot of my answers could include, it depends. Uh, for businesses, when it comes to um, utilization and the number of, uh, of cards, uh, three cards are um, strongly recommended as a minimum. And then on the vendor side, because they're two different uh, types of relationships, uh, a minimum of five. And again, the, the takeaway on uh, the, the um, utilization and the relationships here is making sure that they are reported and reported to a, uh, an existing healthy profile uh, with Dun & Bradstreet at the very least, but uh, Experian um, and Equifax business as well. Uh, debt to income ratios, uh, the, the takeaway on this one is uh, pay the bills down. Uh, the, the fewer, the less money you have outgoing, the more attractive you will be to any lender, whether it be on the, uh, on the consumer or the business side. Excuse me, and unless it's necessary, just you know, avoid taking on uh, new debt. Uh, depending on what you're doing, it could be uh, wholly appropriate, but uh, don't take on new debt unless you need it. Um, for for consumers specifically, uh, inquiries keep them down to a dull roar. And when it comes to business owners and the requests for credit for consumer, well. Uh, the inquiries that will be recorded on um, their consumer credit score, it, it is actually more impactful when it comes to the review of their activity from a business uh, uh, ownership relationship. And the, mince my words there, um, no more than two or three inquiries literally a year for business owners to maintain that high level of um, credibility, thus creditability. Avoiding risky behaviors. Um, Pay bills on time, pay bills on time, pay bills on time, pay bills on time. Uh, business creditability, uh, insufficient funds and, and overdrafts, along with uh, tax liens, they're pretty much kisses of death, um, and we can even toss uh, bankruptcies in there. Avoid them like the plague. It's why, uh, especially the NSFs, um, it is wholly important. In fact, I, I get on a soapbox about this one, um, a, a line of credit for any type of business is wholly appropriate 
in case, just in case. Uh, that will help prevent those um, uh, those circumstances, the non-sufficient funds. When, when it comes to the average bank balance, um, and I won't go into bank rating and all of the levels, but best case scenario is to have $10,000 plus or minus on average in a business checking account. It gives faith to the institution or the people that, people that are evaluating the business um, that money will be available to, to repay the debt. Um, make sure that the suppliers, the vendors, the creditors are reporting uh, the payment activity. Again, you have, to, you have to set up the profile before they can be reported. I'll also add, and this is a deeper talk, topic, if you don't have a profile at this point and you have 10, 15, 20 years worth of relationships with vendors and creditors out there, there is an opportunity to um, ensure that that information is backdated and, um, and that you do appear far more credible uh, than if you didn't have that information reported to the, the business credit bureaus. Um, making sure that uh, all accounts are in the business's name. Uh, this is across the board from, uh, from federal, state, local filings, uh, names on any and all documentation. It, it, it chips away at the credibility, that's the creditability of a business to have um, different names for, uh, for different types of accounts, different filings, even, even as simple as an ampersand. You just don't want to offer any more opportunities for, um, uh, for lack of uh, credibility. And last but not least, going back to the thrust of all this and something that Kim and I were chatting about earlier, business owners, consumers, character is the, um, the primary C in lending period and for a business. Whether it's used as a, a means of collateral or not, meaning a personal guarantee, they will look at personal credit for a business owner. So ensuring that, um, that a good strong score and profile is maintained there is, is wholly uh, appropriate and important. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, I'm just gonna toss these up here. My, Ultimately, my desire uh, when it comes to businesses and business owners, and this really goes back to the, the why I do what I do, um, financial security, peace, peace of mind, call it um, a number of things, but that, that ability to breathe easy is an opportunity for uh, a person with his or her family and community or a business owner with their business family or their personal family to be more present, be more focused, um, and a lot of times just live a better life, a life rather, and, and posit more positively affect their, their community. So I hope some of the information uh, that we went through is uh, uh, both well-received, enlightening, has eliminated some of the, uh, the fear, uncertainty, or doubt that it comes from, that comes from not knowing about things, money. And uh, Kim, thank you very much for the opportunity to share <laughs> A little bit of uh, of my passion very much well Eric thank you so much my goodness you know I gotta confess notwithstanding I've been a banker for you know over two decades I learned a few new things today for example the 29% utilization rate um, is an interesting way to look at credit cards in fact one might actually view credit cards as a line of credit and lines of credit are really to be used seasonally, right? Or uh, yep. to fund gaps in cash flow and intended to be paid back right away. So if we kind of uh, look at our credit card uses as a line of credit to be um, fluctuating balances, uh, we might actually be able to achieve that 29% utilization rate. So thank you so much. We have a number of, of questions already. And just as a reminder, if you would like to ask a question, please type it into the conversation box at the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, the first one, Eric, is do I need a business plan to apply for business credit? <laughs> uh, the, the short answer is no, but it really helps. Uh, and it, it not only helps get the money, but uh, it helps a, a business owner, especially a fledgling one, keep on track. Um, new businesses can very easily be uh, distracted or discouraged, and having something down where there are incremental milestones of achievement can help uh, a newer business owner keep on track. 
depending on the type of either credit or outright financing that one is going for, having that business plan available as um, additional credibility in the business, it's wholly appropriate. So um, you don't have to, but it helps. And the bank is probably going to uh, do a projection for you anyway, just to make sure that the credit that's being used can generate sufficient revenue to be able to yep. pay their loan back. So terrific. All right. How yeah. long do late payments stay on my credit report? <laughs> um, it depends. Uh, from from a, an out-of-the-book standpoint, seven years is the date or the time period, I should say, that data can remain on a credit report uh, and 10 years for, for bankruptcies. That said, there is nothing in writing anywhere in the universe that says anything has to be included on a credit report. Those are guidelines. And then the data that is reported, that is the duration that it can remain. And you, you just mentioned bankruptcy 10 years. How about tax liens? Uh, 10 years. Sorry, mm -hmm. 10 years as well. Okay, terrific. Uh, here's another one about time. How long does it take for my credit score to change? <laughs> um, an hour. Um, <laughs> ser seriously, it's, uh, scores are that fluid. Um, but I, I, think, I think the question being asked is, how long does it take to improve my scores? Uh, so I'll answer it that way. And the answer is, it really depends. All pieces of the credit profile need to be uh, looked at. Uh, all the details in the credit report itself should be looked at. And um, it could take as little as 30 to 45 days. Um, and I like to over promise, excuse me, under promise and over deliver. Uh, it could take as little as 30, 45 days. It could take as long as, as a year. It really depends on what's going on in the credit. Come see you. Um, speaking of coming uh, yeah. to see you, uh, does paying off a collection help my credit? Oh, uh, it, it can. Uh, sorry to be a little around the, the horn on these, but um, I'll come at it this way. When, it, when a collection company, whether it be on the personal or the business side, a collection company may call up and say, hey, pay this off and it's going to help your credit. Um, that, that is not true if the information is reported the way it should be after the fact, because a collection account, whether it's paid, paid for less than the balance due, paid off with a, a zero balance, whenever that payment is made is the last date of last activity. So you can have a collection account that's three years old, the age, you make a payment, and therefore it actually hurts your credit score to have paid that collection off. Now, this is where greater consideration of the overall profile, motivation, whether or not the, de the debt or if the debt is legitimate is inside or outside of the statute of limitations. It, there are a lot of moving parts to this one, so I, I hope I answered that adequately. Well, if not, whoever asked it can certainly follow up with some additional uh, detail from you. And I would say um, our last question for today is going to be, we started our own business with cash because our credit is poor. How can we improve our score if we can't get credit to improve it? Is that the old chicken and egg? Or you have a, you have a secret up your sleeve? Uh, yeah. um, well, no, I wish I had a secret. I'd love to have the crystal ball and the, and the magic wand. Um, I, starting with cash is, is great. Uh, Kim, I think you might actually be able to help in this, <laughs> this instance, to be honest with you. But in terms of credit improvement, uh, making sure that one is paying, paying all the debt, uh, age will help. If you can't get out from underneath the high debt ratio, uh, there's very little that can be done. It's really buckling down, making sure that all aspects of, uh, of the credit profile are addressed and uh, appropriate actions being taken to solidify them um, that you can climb. Out. Ultimately, you, you got to pay down the credit cards though. Uh, and that's where crowdfunding could come in. A little pitch and for certainly. Kim. I love what you're doing, by the way. No, thank you. Hey, listen, one, one more question slipped in. Um, how can one eliminate inquiries, late payments, paid off liens from a report? Or can you? <laughs> um, that, is, that, is a, that is a longer discussion. The short answer is, uh, if the information is legitimate, no. I, the information is... 
uh, let's put it this way. The Fair Credit Reporting Act, and I'm, I'm assuming we're talking about consumer credit at this point. The Fair Credit Reporting Act states that data on a consumer credit report must be 100% accurate, 100% verifiable, and reported in the proper time frame. So there are opportunities for us to ensure that the information is true and accurate and can be verified. But if the information is accurate, verifiable, and reported in the proper time frame, it should be there. Okay. Well, on that uh, cheery note, uh, we hope that everybody has enjoyed today's presentation. There was a lot to take away, but here are some of uh, my thoughts. And in fact, they're a little bit of a re repeat of you, Eric. So I think we're both on the same time, uh, both on the same wavelength here. Personal credit is an emotional topic and a personal one, I would just say, move forward bravely, right? Just deal with it. And as time goes by, hopefully the, the score will improve. Uh, we've already talked about the five C's of, of credit or uh, creditability. Uh, just so you know, banks still write their credit memos to address each of these five C's. So are, they are important. It's not just, we're not just saying it to just because it's kind of cute and five C's are fun to talk about. The reality of it is this is the way that uh, credit worthiness is uh, assessed. Monitor, monitor, to monitor, don't close old credit card accounts, NSFs and overdrafts can be the kiss of death. So what, do whatever you can, get a small line of credit so that you can have it automatically tied to your checking account so that you don't incur those fee and get those dings. And I would say, if all else fails, give Eric a call. And speaking of giving Eric a call, uh, he has generously uh, is offering a, for those of you who might uh, benefit from his services, a 15% discount on all of Apollo's services. We will include this benefit uh, with our survey this afternoon. So please, if you have any uh, further questions or if you'd like to take advantage of his services, please feel free to call him, right? Uh, move forward boldly. What did you take away today? We'd like to know. Please send us an email or post a message on our Facebook account at facebook.com slash breakaway or tweet us at Twitter at break, Breakaway Fund. As is our practice, we would like your feedback. We will be sending you the post webinar link of today's session uh, in the next day or two, so you may review this at your leisure. Uh, it's always nice to have that in uh, black and white so that we can see and refer to it late, later, as well as the survey. So please let us know how we're doing. Let us know how Eric did. Everybody's always on the quest to improve. We appreciate your effort to get this back to us. And uh, finally, we invite you to come to our any of our next any or both of our next uh, upcoming webinars on Thursday, the April the 21st, Launch, Build, Wipeout. What's your strategy to survive the next economic turn featuring Dr. Lawrence Souza? And then on May 26, Fearless Branding featuring Robert Freeman, which is really an important uh, uh, skill to master, not only if you're trying to raise capital, but also if you're trying to improve sales, right? You've got to really represent boldly. So I want to thank once again, Eric Lacey of Apollo Credit for that incredible presentation on credit ability. As a reminder, if you're a business owner and entrepreneur seeking to raise capital, I invite you to give us a call at 844-871-3400 or email us at info at breakawayfunding.com. We look forward to sharing with you how the community capital model can work for you. Again, thank you all for joining us and we look forward to seeing you next time.